Hello, and welcome to our fall uh, spring open house. Welcome to um, welcome to the early uh, oh geez, sorry. I'm a little bit off here. Um, to computer programming and analysis. Uh, my name is Stacy Wilson, and I'll be your host for today's session. Um, before we get started, I will begin with the land acknowledgement. Niagara College acknowledges the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering places home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, and acknowledging reminds us that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendship of Indigenous peoples. Well, I would now like to take this opportunity to introduce the program coordinator, David Stubble, and some of our program faculty, Marsha Badalelli and Melissa Vanderlelli, and our student, Raymond Tellier. We will also have James Mark from our international division who will be on hand during the Q&A to answer any questions you may have. So I can now go through the slide that you will see up right now uh, with some housekeeping items. So the deadline to accept your offer of admission is May 1st, 2021. Many programs are still open for fall, winter and spring intakes. If you have any questions throughout the session, uh, please use the Q&A to a feature, we can um, answer them at the end or um, during the presentation, we'll see what happens. Um, use the live chat feature at the bottom of our website if you have any additional questions throughout the day. And join us for our college exploration or take a virtual tour at a time that works for you. It's for our student services, ask me anything drop in session to speak live to staff throughout the day. And recordings of all sessions will be available online after the event for up to a month. Um, so let's go to the next slide regarding fall term. Perfect. So as Niagara College closely monitors current and projected public health measures, vaccination rates and other factors, a significant increase in on-campus learning is anticipated for a fall 21, 2021 term. The health and safety of our students, staff and faculty remains a top priority. Courses and program elements that return to campus will comply with all public health measures and directives. Updates will be provided regularly as information becomes available and the delivery status for all programs will be posted in May. The most up-to-date and accurate source of information regarding college operations and program delivery information is on our website at niagaracollege.ca slash COVID-19. You can take it away, David. We can start with the presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Stacy. Okay, so just to get moving along, I'll just mention quickly uh, some of the uh, core of the full-time faculty that uh, you'll be working with if you come to Niagara College. So I'm David, Dave Stovell. I, I'm just another faculty member, but I happen to also function as a coordinator just to help uh, uh, arrange meetings and <laughs> things like that. But uh, uh, other full-time members here is uh, Melissa Vanderlilly. And she's joined us today. Marsha Baddeley is here as well. Uh, Cliff Patrick and Peter Vanskoy uh, couldn't attend today, uh, but uh, they're faculty that you'll get to know and love if you come on board. Okay, we have a couple of students who volunteered to uh, uh, do a bit of an explanation. Uh, Paige can't be here herself today, but I have a recording of some of her comments about her life here at the college to share with you. Hi, my name is Paige Bernardin and I'm a second year student in the Computer Programming and Analysis Co-op program at Niagara College. I chose Niagara for many different reasons. The program takes place at the Welland campus located in a friendly residential community, which is only a 15 minute commute from my home. This adds on to the affordability of the school, although they do provide excellent financial aid between different scholarships and bursaries. The location of the campus makes it excellent for the amount of co-op opportunities available, allowing me to expand my knowledge and enhance my developing skills. I personally love all the opportunities the school offers for on-campus intramural sports and different recreational activities. I even have quick and convenient access to the fitness center for a workout before or after class. When on campus, there are so many different quiet study halls and private study rooms perfect for when I am waiting in between classes and want to get some work done. 
Everyone, including students and staff, are so helpful, friendly, enthusiastic, and extremely welcoming as soon as I walk through the door. In the start of my second year, we undertook a big transition to the program distribution being completely online. Through this transition, all the staff has been extremely supportive and helpful seven days a week. They maintain great communication with me and are very organized and structured when it comes to the course material output. There are many different online programs and software that I used to keep in touch with my peers and teachers, including Blackboard, MS Teams, and Discord. I feel that all the content, skills, and techniques I am learning is very up to date, and even though there is endless learning to technology, considering it is rapidly changing, this program sets me up perfectly to soon start my own career once I graduate. It follows with the current trends in web and mobile development and allows me to cr be creative with my work. The professors are highly skilled in the developing aspect of this course, but it also has opportunities to develop one-on-one -on -one client interaction and communication skills. It may not be as ideal compared to being in class and engaging with each other, but there are many benefits to it as well, including the fact that I get to be at home with my dog every day. You have to weigh your options, think about it, and make the right choice for you. But if you're like me and are interested in a career in software development, technical support, web or mobile applications, and everything in between, this program at Niagara College is the right choice for you as it was for me. Hi, my name is Paige Bernardin and I'm a second Okay. So you're probably wondering a bit about what you're going to learn when you do come here to the college. So we definitely just start with the fundamentals. Students often ask, do I have to be an experienced programmer to come and even start in the program? The answer is no. Although it's true that these days, high school opportunities are usually there to learn some programming before you come in, but we make no assumptions. Uh, there's a focus on the language C sharp, but you'll also work with many other languages, SQL for database work uh, extensively, a lot of the web tools that you've probably heard of if you haven't worked with yourself like JavaScript, HTML, CSS. We also do work with Python and some of the languages related to mobile development and uh, more advanced big database work as well. Just to quickly go over again, what we focus on, what you're going to learn is the fundamentals of programming using uh, some of the most common and popular languages that are out there today. We have a strong focus on C Sharp, one of the biggest up and coming languages. And it's hard to even say up and coming anymore. It's one of the most popular languages in use in the world today. Uh, it's totally open source, even though it was developed at Microsoft. Uh, but we also do a lot of work with SQL, the language of databases, uh, relational databases, and of course, all the different web technologies, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and many others for uh, specific use with things like mobile development or advanced database work, right? And of course, the uh, focus is on best practices for software development, whether it's web development, PC, mobile, right? We do, as I mentioned, quite a bit of work with databases because that's where so much comes from in terms of demand in the business world today, whether it's government, business, or any of the other employers that are willing to pay you big bucks to come and work for them, right? So big data is a real uh, focus for us now, right? Uh, we do quite a bit of work with different cloud database systems, including a Amazon's as well, a lot with Microsoft's Azure system. So I'm confident it's a good choice for you to come here because most of the learning you'll do is very much hands-on, experiential learning, right? We build things, we play around with the software, the tools. Uh, we spend very little, actually, no time in lecture halls for the most part. We don't really even normally use them even when we're on campus. We're mostly in smaller groups in labs working together, right? There is this uh, capstone course in term four where all the students in both programs get an opportunity to uh, go through a full development life cycle building an application for a real client, right? And uh, that client could be an outside, uh, it could be a charitable organization or a government organization. It could be a department within the college, uh, but it's a chance to have something to really highlight on your resume as well. Students always tell us that they probably learn more out of doing that project than any other one course. Uh, there also is, of course, co-op opportunity. We have the two different diplomas, the two-year computer programming and the three-year computer programming and analysis, right? And you can switch back and forth during the first two years between them with no problem. But if you're going to do the third year, 
then there's also a co-op component that happens over the summer between the end of the term four and before you come back for term six in the fall, finishing up and graduating at Christmas time. We also have a very advanced and uh, um, impressive, quite honestly, applied research department here at Niagara College. It's one of the most respected in the whole country. And a lot of our students get opportunity to work there both while they are students and sometimes when they graduate from the program, they might work there for 12, even up to 18 months at the research department. Uh, we've just had great success, both for the students having this behind them. They've got great jobs with really good starting salaries when they go out from, uh, from applied research. So. Uh, we have very good job placement and satisfaction. It's just been through the roof. Uh, you might have to travel, but you might not, right? There's a lot even happening here in the Niagara region. So uh, we have Raymond is here today himself. I appreciate that, Raymond. Uh, he's going to stick around to answer any questions you might have for an actual student in the program. But I might as well play the video that he took time to record for us. Uh, so when it came time to choose a college and I was kind of comparing my options, I ended up landing on Niagara College for a couple reasons, uh, but the main reason being the facilities. Uh, so being in a computer programming program, uh, it was pretty important to see the technical facilities and just seeing like what they offer. Um, and Niagara College actually had some of the best facilities that I've seen. Um, some schools didn't even offer any computer labs. Meanwhile, Niagara College actually has multiple computer labs um, and with different computers as well. So let's just say you're taking a design course you're going to most likely use the Macs. Um, there's also computer labs with Windows computers that are actually pretty powerful. So if you're taking a programming course or game design, um, you have all of the tools you need available to you. Um, so let's just say like a personal computer broke and you have to bring it to school every day. You don't have to worry about that at Niagara College because all of the uh, computer and the tools that you're gonna need are provided to you. Um, so you're never gonna get caught behind. And, and this also kind of offers more of a hands-on opportunity too. Uh, so the teachers can walk around the computer labs, they can kind of see what you're doing. Um, and it, it, it's more of just a hands-on learning experience compared to other colleges. And that's why I kind of landed on Niagara College. So when I started my program at Niagara College, unfortunately we were faced with COVID. And so I only got to spend, I'd say half of my term, almost a full term in person. Um, but this reason, for that reason, I'm kind of glad I chose Niagara College. Um, they offered a lot of support when transitioning from in-person to online. So if it was like technical support and you needed some help setting up your computer, uh, Niagara College offered that. Um, as well as let's just say you're having issues coping um, with the online learning and not having that in-person hands-on experience. Um, Niagara College was very supportive throughout that entire process. Um, and so now that we're fully online, the teachers reply to emails quickly. Um, they're always there to help you if you're doing kind of like a zoom session which we use blackboard collaborate um, you're able to just kind of like raise your hand type in the chat um, and so for that reason i'm glad i chose niagara college because they made that transition flawless um, and and i've felt supported throughout my entire time uh, in my program so in the computer programming field transitioning to online learning actually wasn't that difficult at all um, i actually found it offered more of a chance to kind of solidify my skills on my own time as well as learning at my own pace, right? Like, I don't know, certain gamers or people that are in this field might actually have different sleep schedules. Um, so personally, I tend to sleep later into the day. So having these courses kind of at your own pace was kind of nice, right? Because I, I do my work from midnight till five in the morning. Um, and so transitioning to online learning actually wasn't that bad for me. Um, you have the support from teachers. So if you ever need help, you can actually email them. Um, it's oftentimes if you're doing kind of like a Zoom learning session, we use Blackboard, um, you can just type in the chat and the teachers are very friendly. So the transition to online learning, especially in a computer programming field, was, was fairly easy. Um, all the programs work at home, so it's not like you're really missing much from in class, aside from the hands-on learning, um, but you're still getting that through this program. Um, and so the transition to online actually wasn't that difficult whatsoever. Okay, so I think you should be able to hear me. Um, I'll just mention that, uh, you know, if you're questioning yourself, you know, do I have what it takes to succeed in this area? You probably have a pretty good idea already, but one thing that I really would like to emphasize is you have to be ready. This is a constantly evolving field and you've gotta be willing to be that lifelong learner you've probably heard mentioned before, right? You don't have to be an absolute math whiz. I mean, basic math skills is uh, important. 
Uh, but you know, what I would say is more important is good problem solving skills, being able to think through, figure out how you're going to determine where a bug is and so on. And of course, we do quite a bit of work teaching you techniques for that as well right? Do you have a passion for it, right? You probably know that you're interested in this field because you enjoy it. And if you do, then you're probably going to do very well. The background you come from, I've seen students come in and succeed with exceptional uh, uh, levels of success who have backgrounds as everything from a theologian. Musicians often <laughs> are very, very good programmers. I don't know if it's something to do with the logic involved in music and or whatever, but uh, you know, if you have a logical mind at all, good problem solving skills, then there's no doubt you'll be able to succeed with us. Okay, a few uh, FAQs which often come up, so I figured I might as well put them in here. Financial support. Yes, actually, you heard the students mention as well that uh, in addition, of course, to the OSAP funding for Ontario uh, students, there's all kinds of scholarships and bursaries. Some are specific to our program, but there are some that are just general to all students who can apply. And uh, it's a shame that actually sometimes, some years, not all the money even gets claimed. So yes, by all means, we encourage you to apply for as many of the bursaries and so on as possible. Do you need a powerful computer at home? I mean, this is one of the things that has come up as we've had to do more work online. As Chris was mentioned earlier, we're hoping as much as possible to be back in the classroom for the fall, uh, but we do have to follow whatever the provincial guidelines are, or the health guidelines, right? A powerful computer at home? Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> obviously it's an advantage, right? The college does recommend if you're looking to purchase a Windows 10 laptop, okay, at least eight, I, I would definitely say go for 16 gigs of RAM, right? Uh, that would be probably your best choice. But you know, the truth is we have software that lets you connect from home and use lab computers physically sitting at the college and you just control them remotely and they have all the software that you require on them, right? Sorry, <laughs> it was my Alexa started talking. Okay, so if you have a Mac, a Chromebook, even uh, you know an, an Android tablet, you can actually connect and work remotely uh, with the systems in our lab. So that solves the issue for a lot of students that just aren't able to uh, buy a, a nice computer to have at home, right? Uh, yes, you can easily switch, as I mentioned, between the two and three year programs. So, you know, you might have signed up for the three year, but you get a great job offer offer after the second year. Yes, you can just take your two-year diploma and go and go out and be happy and successful, right? Or more often, we have students switching. They signed up for the two-year program and decide they really want the benefit of the co-op and the final academic term, and they decide to stick around and switch into the three-year as well. So it's easy to do pretty much at any point right to the end of the second year. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, uh, we really want to thank you for attending the open house. A uh, reminder that that deadline is May 1st, okay, to uh, uh, accept your offer of admission. There are lots of ways you can continue your discussion today with the college. And as was mentioned already, the recording sessions were going to be available online after the event. So uh, if you were going to throw the uh, floor open for questions now. You can ask Raymond, uh, the student who's here with us today, any of the faculty members, Marsha, Melissa, or myself. And uh, even, you know, if we do run out of time, which will probably be okay, uh, I'm going to put up my email address in the chat so that you can always follow up with me and ask additional questions. All right, I'm going to turn it over now back to Stacy. And uh, well, actually, I'm going to ask Stacy, do we have any questions coming in the chat? We do. Um, so the first question we have is from Kerr, and he would like to ask, uh, he applied for computer programming. Uh, where should I attend computer programming analysis or computer programming analysis co-op? Basically, what, which one should he do, do you think, pros and cons? Fair enough. Uh, well, as I just touched on, you really aren't committing yourself at the beginning. You can easily switch between them. So, uh, you know, it, it's really not something you have to stress about right now. There are definite advantages to the three-year diploma uh, in terms of, uh, well, because you never know what might change, but I know one factor is a three-year diploma can get you a work permit in the United States, whereas a two-year does not, right? So that's one thing that I know some students have weighed as a factor. Um, 
you know, the, the extra learning you get in term six, they're more advanced courses, especially in big data and mobile. And so a lot of students really want to get those courses as well. So uh, the good news is you really don't have to worry about being tied to one decision at this point. You can always switch back and forth. That's great. Thank you, Dave. Um, this one is for James. All international rep. Um, Vanuka would like to know what the qualifications are needed as an international student. Hello. Hi, I'm, I'm James from uh, the International Division. I'm one of the regional managers there. And it's a great question, right? Uh, as an international student, we actually assess transcripts the same uh, for the same regulations that we would a domestic, domestic student. So I, as I've seen, right, we're looking for the grade 12 English and the grade 11 or 12 mathematics, right? And, and for international students, the mathematics is going to be key that you make sure any high school transcript that you submit and we can have notarized copies, translated copies are okay, um, but make sure in the last year or second last year of high school that you do have a mathematics course <clears throat> with over 60% in the course. And that will cover off that admission requirement. Also, as you may not have done grade 12 English, like our domestic students, what we are looking for is an appropriate IELTS score. So that is your English language test that shows you do have a high enough English language. And for this program, it would be IELTS 6.0 with nothing below 5.5. I do, I do hope that answers your question there. Great, thank you, James. Thank you. We have another question, um, specifically about COA, um, particularly about how the how we can work and can we work every year while studying? So how does the co-op program break down? Well, I, I guess I could take this one. The uh, co-op program, uh, the college works very hard to actually help all students find a co-op position. Uh, we've had really good success the last few years in particular uh, with, we've had more openings available than students <laughs> than students. So uh, we've had good success with students all finding paid co-ops, uh, you know, that they can easily get to transportation wise and so on. And uh, some of them have been just fantastic. We've had a few students get uh, internships that last longer than the four months. And we've accommodated that by actually allowing them to come back and uh, do their final academic term even a year later if that's required. Uh, it's not a problem at all. So um, in terms of how it works, there's a dedicated department of uh, professionals that go out, they solicit and uh, advertise, and they try to bring in excellent co-op opportunities for our students. And uh, it's a very successful system. So we have another question here. Can we do software engineering on further degrees after being enrolled in this course? The college does have some formal agreements with some universities where you can take credits from our program and apply them towards a degree uh, going further on. But there's even more universities out, universities out there that our students have successfully transferred to, uh, gotten quite often two years credit uh, for their three-year diploma in terms of getting their degree at different universities such as uh, Guelph, for example. Brock, we have a formal agreement with and uh, believe it or not, there's one university in uh, Australia that just loves our graduates and is always trying to bring as many as possible, giving them great deals on uh, transfer credits. So yeah, there's lots of good opportunities. Any exciting projects on the go? Or... Oh wait, here we are. Uh, do we need to have some basic information about programming or C and C++ before starting the course? Do you want to take that one, Melissa? Uh, sure. Um, the answer is no, actually. We start right from scratch, assuming that you have never programmed before. So um, we have two introductory courses that kind of run parallel to each other in two different languages. So we have a JavaScript course and a C-sharp course. 
Uh, and both of those give you an opportunity to learn programming right from the bottom up. So another one here we have is, I aim to be an IT officer. Will this course help me achieve my aim in the future? Um, I'm not sure what an IT officer is exactly, but uh, I'm quite confident the answer would be yes. Uh, you'll, you know, I'm not sure if an IT officer is with uh, regard to doing any software development, but certainly these days having many hats to wear in any job is a good thing. And odds are that it would set you up for pretty much any job in IT. I see a question about the differences between the two-year diploma and the three-year. As I've said, uh, the first two years are almost the same. There's only one course different. So, you know, you really uh, can easily go back and forth. Oh, I see Marsha's ready to answer a question here. I think this one might be an old, an old question. Oh, there's Marsha, sorry. Okay. Is there a question I can't answer? Is there one left over for me to jump in on? Oh, one just popped up here. Which are the other subjects that we need to focus on apart from programming? Well, you know, I'm going to maybe talk, if you're talking about the IT officer, maybe as an IT manager, what I would like to say is some of our students after our program do extend to a university program and they get a job full time and uh, will continue on and do their master's. Uh, usually that by that time, it's a master's degree that they're doing uh, in the evenings or on the weekends through their company in which you're working that often leads to management positions. So some of our grads who have been out a while do move on to high level IT positions. Um, regarding some of the other things that you wanna study besides programming, you know, I'll tell you funny enough, a lot of our graduates, when they complete the program, say that some of the best skills they learned outside of programming were the communication and presentation skills they were surprised as they began working how much that was a part of their job. And they really appreciated some of those aspects of the program that we provide in our curriculum. So we have another question here. Oh, James Smart is gonna answer, perfect. <clears throat> yeah, it's a, it's a great question um, about qualifications for getting into the program, right? So this student is from Sri Lanka with a GCE ordinary, so an O-level exam, uh, distinction passes for mathematics and English. Now, I believe that you do qualify, but what we do in these cases where I cannot be 100% sure is that what I can do for you is provide an email address so we can contact directly and you could send your documents to us and we can have our official uh, international admissions team look at your transcripts and give you a 100% answer uh, if you do qualify or not. What I'm seeing and uh, what I know about the O-level and the system in Sri Lanka is that you would qualify, um, but I definitely would like to give you an email address and have our international admissions team confirm that information for you 100% so that as you continue with your application, um, you're confident knowing that you do qualify. Okay. So I will, <clears throat> I will send that over to you shortly. Um, here's another, I think is uh, from an international student that uh, about the offer letter. Uh, if you applied on March 16th, um, usually our admissions team is taking about uh, 10 to 15 business days to uh, respond with offer letters if you qualify. So it's been maybe uh, about 10 days or so. I would say have a little bit more patience. We're working hard to get as many of those offers out as possible. And as well in the chat, I will 
I will put a, an email address that we can reach your regional manager at, okay? And your regional manager can help check up on your offer letter. They can also help check uh, admissions transcripts for you, okay? So I'll be happy to put that in the chat right now. Thank you. Great questions. Uh, you can see students are really excited about getting here to study computer programming. Oh, here we do, we have a question. Will we be able to learn programming languages like Java and C++ in this course? I'll answer that question then. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Java is the language used for one mobile development course in our final term, term six of the, the analyst program. Uh, the main language is C sharp. And, um, and then we have a number of scripting languages like Python and JavaScript. Oh, can I get information about the teaching pattern in Niagara? Feel free to uh, speak today um, if you have any more to speak to everybody or we've got lots of questions coming in now. You know what, I, I was gonna say, uh, we this question since Raymond's here I would I would really like Raymond's take on how he sees the teaching pattern at the college from a student perspective and, and maybe one of the faculty can jump in on how we try to do that but it's kind of interesting to hear from a student perspective how they experience it yeah for sure um so I guess starting off when we were actually doing in-person learning uh, it was a bit different than obviously the online learning. Um, in person was nice just due to the fact that we were all sitting in computer labs. Um, and so we would kind of have a session where we would learn. Um, so let's just say it was like a two hour class. Maybe the first hour would be spent listening um, and kind of learning on what we're going to be doing. Uh, and then the last half would normally be more where we do hands on learning. So we'd actually start coding. Um, when we transitioned to online, things kind of changed. So it was more learn at your own pace, uh, watch videos. And then from there, you would like complete your work, right? So let's just say you may have had a task a week ahead to complete a project. Um, throughout that week, you would start watching those videos. Um, if you'd run into hiccups, you could always like email the teachers. Um, but both, both learning experiences were, were enjoyable. Um, but the online one was just as good as well. Um, so it depends what happens come September. Um, but both options for like the teaching patterns were amazing. That's great, Raymond. Thanks. Yeah, we really, really, I think all of us as faculty feel very strongly about practicing and being at the computer doing the work yourself. So although we do offer lecture in all of our classes, we often try to have that lecture move into hands on practice as soon as possible. Another question here. Do I need prior studies if I want to study programming? It, you know, obviously there could be some advantage, but no, we do take you right from the basics, the fundamentals right up through. So, uh, you know, if you do have some time to dedicate to learning a bit on your own, you're going to, it'll be to your advantage, but it is not a requirement. Uh, we have many students come in with no programming experience and still do very well in the program. Um, should we have some basic knowledge about the programming languages before we join the course? Sorry, that's the one I was just trying to answer. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> okay, so we have another follow-up then. <clears throat> Can you please tell me uh, some more about how students will be examined in the I think that might be for Jane. Yeah, most of our uh, testing or examinations are done through hands-on programming challenges. So um, we do some small theory quizzes, but I would say the majority of our assessments are through uh, programming challenges. Um, are there any particular companies who directly hire Niagara students? Great question. Interesting question, because uh, sometimes we've had history where a company is uh, doing a big hire and we've gone through years where they 
taken a number of our grads year after year. Then we have a scenario where a graduate will get in a particular company and um, they start, they do well. And so then they start recommending the company to some of their friends. And we, we've had situations where uh, friends made at the college end up working together and sometimes start their own business together. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of opportunities like that. And um, I will say, you know, we're in the Niagara region. We're part of the gold, what's called the Golden Horseshoe, which is uh, the, you know, the lake that uh, surrounds a number of communities. And the greater Toronto uh, area is, is something we border on. Um, students often get jobs about, it would be about a half an hour outside of our region and beyond um, quite often these days. What about the opportunities students are provided after completion of the course? Well, uh, there are employment services the college offers to help students uh, get jobs after they graduate. Uh, to be honest, uh, <laughs> it has not been a big challenge for our students to find work in recent years. Uh, but yes, there is a support system in place to help you uh, with your job search. Oh, we have another one. I wanted to know about part-time jobs for international students in the college. So I could, uh, I could speak a little bit about that. Um, uh, in terms of part-time jobs at the college, we, in normal times, right, when everybody is in the college, we have uh, a position called student assistants, which are students that we hire to work at the international department's offices. So they, they help students who are coming into the office at the front desk, they help them with simple, you know, sort of registration tasks on the computer, where to find your timetable, all of that stuff. So there are jobs that are available directly through international at the college. Very good opportunity because we can work around your schedule <clears throat> as much as possible, right? The other thing to remember with uh, being an international student in, uh, in Niagara especially is that we are a tourist destination. So in terms of part-time jobs, we have a lot of industries uh, that are you know, service-driven, they are service industries. So they have a large need for part-time employees to work in evenings, sort of after school, on weekends, and also during the summertime uh, when some students might have a break is also peak season for tourism in Niagara. So there are plenty of opportunities for part-time jobs as you're studying. And please remember, it's only up to 20 hours per week as an international student. But in the summertime, when you are out of class, uh, you could be working a full-time job in the area. So definitely a, a lot of opportunity. And uh, as David uh, mentioned, we do have supports at the college, so the career services that can help with resume building and interview skills are all things that can help you find that part-time job. I can actually add a little to that, um, working in marketing and recruitment. Um, the events are a little bit different now, given the situation, but when we were doing the open house, if we were doing it on campus, we would always hire many, many international students to work for the day and for any events that we had, um, upwards to 100 students or more. And then we also do occasionally offer part-time roles in the recruitment department. Um, once, once you're here, um, you know, keep your eye on the job boards and on social media. We always post the positions on there as well. So you'll definitely find something. Okay, so we have some more questions here. Do we need any other skills for extra benefits while getting placements? I don't think there's any additional skills that you would need on paper, but any additional skills that you have will do nothing but benefit you. So if you wanna take the time to learn other 
programming languages or other techniques outside of what we're doing in class, that that's only going to benefit you in the long run. You know, it can help add to your resume and make you more attractive to potential employers. Um, is there any age limit in applying to this course, uh, a minimum age? Not as far as I know, if you have the, uh, you know, the minimum educational requirements, uh, it wouldn't matter how young you are. <laughs> I guess if you're accelerated and you're and you're pushed right through high school and whatnot, have that, has any of you ever had a very young student? It's an interesting question. I haven't really thought about it. I think the youngest has been 17, but I will let you know that the ages we see in our class is quite expanded. So I would say we have students anywhere from 17 years old right through to 50 something. Yeah, I can definitely attest to that. I was a student in my mid thirties. I went back to school, my second round of college. So yeah, I think anything goes, which is kind of a nice mix for Niagara College. You can learn from so many different people, which is really nice. Okay, so what about extracurricular activities in Niagara? Do you mean through the school or just uh, Niagara in general? There's definitely lots to do in Niagara. I mean, there's no short, short of hiking and just so many different things to do. As for the school, I know there's no end to clubs and oh, just Niagara in general. Everybody want to share what they like to do in Niagara? I'll, I'll mention, uh, I mean, for, for me, what I really love about Niagara is you can be sort of downtown St. Catharines, uh, going to your favorite restaurant or bar. Uh, there's an incredible sort of art scene there. Uh, shows, you can see sporting events, uh, dance clubs in Niagara Falls. Um, but then you, you, know, you, you go 10 minutes outside the city and you're in beautiful nature. And that's my favorite thing is to sort of take walks on the escarpment, um, to take walks around the canal. I really love the nature that is here in uh, Niagara, for sure. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. And sporting events, I see is one of the follow-ups here. Hockey, can't go wrong with hockey. We have the Ice Dogs, the local team. Um, Welland actually has the Welland Jackfish now, baseball. They've become really popular. Um, They're awesome. <laughs> Jackfish fans. <laughs> um, what else? I mean, you can play ball hockey. There's just, there's so many different teams and you'll see people in parks playing soccer. I think there's a Hyalai club uh, going out to the falls. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different things to do it's, uh, sports wise. Yeah, the best thing about our area it, you can enjoy a lot of those things in a smaller city environment where parking is easy or there aren't as many crowds. But if you like city life, you know, you can hop on a bus or a train and get to Toronto with no trouble at all. So you get the best of both worlds in our area. True. Um, oh, Dave's going to answer this next question. Do we need to have a university degree or this college certification will be enough to get a good job? The short answer is uh, the college diploma is enough to get a good job. Uh, we actually have quite a number of university graduates that come back to our program at the college because they might have done computer science, but at university it's very theoretical and they wanna get more practical instruction to actually help them get a job out in the workplace. Now, that being said, uh, there's no doubt having both is the <laughs> best of both worlds because it gives you that practical experience from your college instruction. And you know the degree is gonna help you in the long run in your, in your uh, career. There's no doubt about that at all. But yes, uh, we, I recently heard from the director of the Niagara Research Department commenting that every one of the, our graduates that went through and worked for them for a while, everyone has gotten 
fantastic jobs recently, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year to start. So, uh, you know, there's definitely a good demand for our diploma. That's an amazing starting wage. Wow, can't beat that. Yeah, I know. I kind of went, oh wow, that's good news. <laughs> Maybe I'll change careers. <laughs> I'll ask the question to the faculty then. How have you in, um, been with the switch over to online teaching and the changes? I think, I feel like everybody has really, it's been quite a seamless adjustment um, for everyone. All the faculty have been so great. Well, yeah, I, I feel, um... The online space has been nice for students who may not feel like they're comfortable asking questions in a live class. I found that some of the students uh, participate freer uh, through the online space, whether it be through chat or having separate Teams discussions with me. Um, but for that type of student, they've really enjoyed it. And it's been nice as a faculty person to be a part of that. So I feel as a faculty member, I've still been able to be very interactive with my students through, um, through the tools that we have. That's great. Oh, oh, we do have another question here. Which universities do you recommend to get a degree after this certification? Um, do you know of any like bridging schools? I can give you uh, information I will put in the chat to talk to you a little further. Um, they would know any sort of, you know, bridging aspects and whatnot. And Stacy, there's an online site students can go to to compare how many credits they'll get from different universities in Ontario for Niagara College. But I'll give a shout out in particular to Guelph University, Great. York, which is in Toronto. Um, both of those schools, I know students of ours have gone to and received quite a few credits and have enjoyed their experience. Oh, wait, Any question. Oh, I'm a part-time artist and I run my small business. I wanna know if this counts in the part-time working hours or not. So I'm not sure if this is in reference to uh, international students who are here in Canada on a part-time, sorry, on a student visa, where there is a limitation to working in Canada uh, part-time for 20 hours per week. Now, if you run a small business in a different country, from my understanding, uh, that would not be a conflict. It would be Anything you're doing in Canada, uh, you know, being taxed or w using your social insurance number here in Canada. To get further information on working and what may happen if you're uh, part-time and have a small business and you're a student here, um, I would highly recommend to join our international Ask Me Anything sessions where we do have international student service team members, many of them who are uh, the student advisors who, who can give detailed uh, visa and immigration support to you. So I'll, I, I don't know, Stacy, is it okay to put the Zoom link in the chat for, for that? Yeah, that's fine. That'd okay, I will, I will push that over for everybody. Thank you. And then, um, James, do you know much about scholarships or would, again, that be something where they would be best to attend the international Ask Me Anything? Scholarships are pretty straightforward. Uh, you can go d directly to the international website. And I can, I can uh, get the link for you in just a second. And all of our available scholarships for international students are listed. You can see what the requirement is and you can download the application form. 
to submit. So absolutely, uh, there are scholarships out there. They have different requirements. So it's something you'll have to take a look at and see if you uh, qualify for any of those scholarships. Great, thank you. So I think we can wrap it up. And I really just want to thank everybody for attending and to the staff and faculty and to the students. Just thank you everyone uh, so much for making this a really great session and answering everyone's questions and making everyone feel so welcome. Um, and no matter where you choose to study, um, you know, obviously we hope it's Niagara College because we all think it's really great. Um, but if you have any questions, just reach out to us and we'd be happy to answer them.